So this uh, talk is really about automating the pushing of multiple Docker tags into Docker Hub. And really what we're trying to do is we have some repository and we want to build a Docker image. We want to push it to a repo like Docker Hub and we want it to have multiple tags on it. And then I want to use the ingrained built-in build automation on Docker Hub. I don't want to use any build automation on my GitHub repo or anywhere else. I just want to make changes in my GitHub and have Docker Hub build it, push it into its repo, and then apply multiple tags to it. Like I might want latest and I want some kind of semantic version. By default, uh, what happens is using the automation is you make a change in the Git repo, then the Docker build Docker Hub build automation will see that change and it will initiate a build, and then the Docker Hub build automation will build an image and tag the image with latest. That's its default behavior, and then the Docker Hub natural build automation will push that new image to Docker Hub as latest. That's all it does, and so that's cool. If you only want latest, that works out fine. Um, there are a couple ways that you can change this, though. In this case, and this is assuming that we're running the default build version, which is uh, whenever a branch master has a change, we're going to run this Docker file and we're going to tag whatever the result are as latest. That is the default build. So every commit that goes into that branch will be built and that every image will be built. And then that image will be pushed to Docker Hub as latest but that's not what I want I wanted something a little different and I'll talk about it later all right so right here you can see this is sort of the same build definition I showed you a minute ago on docker hub and we're gonna stick with this one and really you might not do this I just really wanted to show you is hey I want this thing to be tagged multiple times how can I do that and we're gonna use um, Oh, gee, I started to use Markdown in here. I'll have to go find that and kill it. So Docker Hub supports overriding of the build and deploy behavior with a set of hooks. <coughs> they have uh, a set of hooks that you can actually, in the root of your repo, you can create a hooks directory and add any of these pre or posts, or you can actually put a file in there with that name. So you can do pre-build, you can replace the build script, but that means you own the whole thing. If you do pre-build and post-build, they will run the build, and then you can do whatever stuff you want after that. All right. So in my case, here's an example. I actually made a change. I added to hooks, and I overrode the build. And the reason I overrode the build is I wanted to add multiple hooks, multiple tags to this, so that when you do a Docker inspect, you see all the tags. So the way this is really going to work here, right, we're going to, so all the green and yellow is the same as it was before. Get repo, we make a change, Docker automation picks it up, except now I have a hooks build file, and it's going to run that. It's going to build the image and tag it as latest, but it's really going to, this is kind of a misstep here. I wanted it to look similar. It's actually going to run that build script, and in my case, it's going to add multiple tags. And then we're going to take the new image and push it to Docker Hub as latest. And then we're going to run another hook file called post push that integrates across all the, in my case, I'll show you what it does. It basically finds all the tags with a Docker inspect on all those images that were built on the image that was built. And it pushes the, all those tags. And because of the way the push works, it doesn't use any more space on Docker Hub. It's just going to add more tags to the existing hash, the existing uh, image that's out there. Now, when you build any files uh, in this hooks directory, you can actually get access to any of these variables. So the hooks build, I'm just, what I did is I just took the same build.sh that I normally run from a command line and I put it in the hooks directory. So now it just, in this case, I wanted to set my version to match the Confluent version. So this happens to be an image that's built on top of the Confluent image and we add an extra couple of jars to it. So we get more functionality. You can see I'm running the Docker build command and I needed to add the latest because by default, the build automation on Docker Hub is always going to look for a latest. Even if you don't want latest, if you if you just use the standard build automation, you got to build the latest so we can pull it. Otherwise, the build will be marked as failed. In this case, I'm add, actually adding three tags to this, uh, a, a single kind of global tag for that version. I've got a timestamp version of that and the latest. So if I put this out there, what will actually happen is a build will get run on Docker Hub 
it will be tagged with multiple tags, but it will only be pushed to the repo with the latest tag because that's the default behavior for the push phase. Now, you can add a, a post push. And so after the build's been done and latest has been pushed, this script will run. What this script does is it finds for for this repo, which in this case would be freemansoft slash CP server, for the re, this repo, and you can find out that you have a bunch of variables available to you in these scripts. For this repo, it will iterate across all of the images in this repo in the build directory, like local, which will just be the ones we just did. It will find all of those, pull off the uh, first line, which is a header line, and then gather up all the version numbers, ignoring any of them that have none, and it will just do a Docker push on each one of those. So in the example I had up here where we had three um, tags put on this, it'll actually push three times. Right, it'll push latest over again. So I could actually filter out latest in the script below, but we know I really wanted this confluent version and the confluent version dash timestamp. So if I keep pushing this and keep rebuilding, making changes, there'll always only be one confluent version, but there'll be a bunch of timestamped versions out there so you can see what changed over time if you need to. So that's all I needed to do here. And again, this is because we are using a very simple build definition that says whenever there's a change on master, ignoring all tagging, just do a build and push that as latest. And then I appended a script that actually, I changed it so it generates more tags. And then I push each one of those tags up to Docker Hub. And that's it. And that's all there is to it. And I got nothing else to say. So I hope that's useful to you. Bye.